Chapter 6 After the death of Harriet Lynn, the village chiefs gathered in Jake's village to find a solution. However, they were unable to come up with one and had to accept Doc's decision. He refused to retire and hide, stating that he needed them, and they needed him. He packed his most important belongings, including small bottles containing his cultures that needed warmth, and prepared to move. As he headed towards his tractor, a girl of about fourteen approached him in tears, begging him to help her mother in Leibniz. Doc followed her to the poverty-stricken dwelling where he found the girl's mother tied to the bed with medical instruments laid out. The medical lobby police, including Stan Tanana, were waiting for him. The threat had been enough, and no actual injury had been inflicted. Doc insulted Stan, and she struck him across the mouth with the handle of her gun before escaping on a tractor disguised as one used by the villagers. The police followed her, leaving Doc behind. Judge Ben Wilson, who looked like Jake's brother, was waiting for Doc and Stan. He cut off Stan's formal charges, stating that Doc's lawyer had already drawn up the necessary documents. Doctor, you would do better raising a flock of babies at home. Well, young man, so you're Miley. Okay, your trial comes up day after tomorrow. It would be a shame to lock you up in Southport Jail, a man of your importance. We'll just keep you here in the pending trial room. It's a lot more comfortable. Stan had been simmering, and now she seemed to blow her safety valve. Judge Wilson, your methods are your own business in local affairs, but this involves Earth Medical Lobby. I demand... Tch, tch. The judge stared at her reprovingly. Young woman, you don't demand anything. This is Mars. If Space Lobby can stand me, I guess our friends over at Medical will have to. Or should I hold trial right now and find Miley innocent for lack of evidence? You wouldn't, Stan cried. Then her face sobered suddenly. I apologize. Medical is pleased to leave things in your hands, of course. Wilson smiled. Court's closed for today. Doc, I'll show you your cell. It's right next to my study, so I'm heading there anyhow. He began taking off his robe while Stan went out with the police, her voice sharp and continuous. The cell was both reasonably escape-proof and comfortable, Doc saw, and he tried to thank the judge. But the old man waved it aside. Forget it. I'd just like to see that little termagant taken down. But don't count on my being soft. My methods may be a bit unusual. I always did like the courtroom scenes in the old books by that fellow Smith, but Space Lobby never had any reason to reverse my decisions. Anything you need? Sure, Doc told him, grinning despite his bitterness. A good biology lab and an electron microscope. Um, how about a good optical mic and some stains? Just got them in on the last shipment. Figure they were meant for you anyhow, since Jake Mullins asked me to order them. He went out and came back with the box almost at once. He snorted at Doc's incredulous thanks and moved off, his bedroom slippers slapping against the hard floor. Doc stared after him. If he were a friend of Jake, willing to invent some excuse to get a microscope here. But it didn't matter. Friend or foe, his death sentence would be equally fatal. And there were other things to be thought of now. The little microscope was an excellent one, though only a monocular. Doc's hands trembled as he drew his cultures out and began making up a slide. The sun offered the best source of light near the window, and he adjusted the instrument. Something began to come into view, but too faintly to be really visible. He remembered the stains, trying to recall his biology courses. More by luck than skill, his fourth try gave him results. Under two thousand powers, he could just see details. There were dozens of cells in his impure culture, but only one seemed unfamiliar. It was a long, worm-like thing, sharpened at both ends, with the three separate nuclei that were typical of Martian life-forms. Nearby were a host of little rod-like squiggles just too small to see clearly. The discovery of Martian life was a momentous occasion, but it came with unforeseen consequences. A new disease had emerged, unlike anything Earth had ever seen. Bacteria that had been harmless to humans for centuries were now useless against this new threat. The disease was purely Martian in origin, and it was spreading fast. As the trial began, the courtroom was filled with villagers, including Lou and Jake. Despite the gravity of the situation, Jake seemed unfazed by the proceedings. He even represented the defendant, much to the chagrin of Stan and the medical lobby. The trial was chaotic, with facts being twisted and slanted in every direction. But Jake remained calm and collected, 
Even when it was revealed that he had been in contact with the infected individual, Dr. Samuel Miley. Jake's questioning of Dr. Tanana exposed her negligence in failing to report Miley's arrival on Mars. It was a small victory, but it gave Jake hope that he could uncover the truth behind the disease and save lives. As the trial continued, Jake's determination grew. He knew that the fate of humanity rested on his shoulders, and he was ready to do whatever it took to find a cure. I will entertain no further arguments declared Matthews, his face smug and satisfied. Stan, by his side, looked equally pleased. Wilson turned to Jake, the defense lawyer, and asked, Do you have anything to say? Jake stood up confidently. Yes, Your Honor. We admit to all the factual testimony given by the lobby. Samuel Miley did perform surgery on Harriet Lynn in Einstein. However, it is not illegal for a doctor to perform an operation within an accepted area, even if the chances of success are small. There is no evidence of any crime or unethical conduct committed by Dr. Miley. Stan and Matthews were outraged, but Wilson appeared calm. He banged his gavel and Jake picked up two old books from his table. In the case of Harding v. Southport, 2043, it was established that a lobby is responsible for any member on Mars and must report any criminal conduct by its members. Failure to report is an admission of responsibility for the member's conduct. At the time Samuel Miley arrived, Dr. Stantina Tanana was the highest representative of the medical lobby in Southport and identified Miley as a doctor without any change in status. The lobby did not report Miley's presence or conduct to any authority, thereby accepting him as a doctor in good standing for whose conduct the lobby accepted full responsibility. Wilson nodded in agreement, passing the book to Matthews. Seems clear-cut to me, he said. Matthews argued that Dr. Miley operated outside a hospital, but Jake produced the charter for the medical lobby on Mars, which agreed to perform all necessary medical services for the planet, including surgery outside of any hospital. The charter defined hospital zones as extending not less than three nor more than 100 miles, and Einstein was about 110 miles from the nearest hospital at Southport. Therefore, Dr. Miley was forced by charter provisions to undertake necessary surgery in Einstein to protect the good name of his lobby. Doc, who had been packing his bag, paid no attention to Matthew's arguments. Wilson abruptly pounded his gavel, indicating that he would entertain no further arguments. The Honorable Court has deemed Dr. Samuel Miley fully qualified to practice medicine on Mars and has ruled that he acted ethically in the case of Harriet Lynn's passing, the judge declared. The medical lobby of Southport shall be responsible for the costs of this case. With that, he removed his robe and quickly retreated to his private quarters, signaling the end of the trial. Doc stood up unsteadily, hardly daring to believe what he had just heard. He made his way towards Jake, attempting to avoid Stan, but she intercepted him, hurling accusations and threats that reminded him of their only fight during their brief marriage. When she finally quieted down, he met her gaze. You're wasting your time fighting me when there's a plague out there that could be worse than any disease we've ever known, he told her harshly. Take a closer look at what's beneath the black specks on your corpses. You'll find the first Martian disease. If you start researching it now, you might just become a real doctor in time to do something about it. But I doubt it. She recoiled from him. You've been conducting unauthorized research, she accused. Prove it, he challenged but you'd be better off trying it yourself and forgetting about your precious rules. He followed Jake out to the tractor, surprised to see the old man sweating profusely. He shook his head at Doc's expression, his grin uncertain. Matthews is incompetent, he muttered. They could have had you, Doc. That charter is so vague that anyone can twist it to say whatever they want, and building a hospital here meant following Earth's rules. Wilson took a risk by letting you go, but I guess we got lucky. Let's get out of here. Doc climbed into the tractor, his mind racing. They had evaded punishment this time, but he knew that Stan would come after him again. He had no plans to abandon his research.